During the initial stages of the Pacific War, Imperial Japan commanded the most powerful naval force in the world, the Kido Butai. This powerful carrier fleet wrought havoc during the opening months of the conflict and destroyed all that stood in its way. Unlike their American counterparts who operated carriers singly, the Japanese Navy operated them in mass. The result was the Kido Butai, an elite naval force of six fleet carriers. By grouping their carriers, the Japanese Navy had much greater striking power. This was augmented by the fact that at the start of the Pacific War, Allied naval aircraft were generally outperformed by their Japanese rivals. To better understand the Kido Butai, Let's take a look at the different vessels that served in it. Number one, the Akagi. Length, 855 feet. Maximum speed, 31 knots. Crew, 1,630. Aircraft capacity, 66. Originally designed as a battle cruiser, the Akagi was converted to an aircraft carrier in 1923. The ship was reconstructed and modernized between 1937 and 1938. The Akagi served as the flagship of the Kido Butai, spearheading most of Japan's early carrier operations. Number two, the Kaga. Length, 812 feet. Maximum speed, 28 knots. Crew, 1,708. Aircraft capacity, 72. Similar to the Akagi, Kaga did not start off as an aircraft carrier. It was originally intended as a Tosa-class battleship, but was converted to an aircraft carrier in the 1920s. Kaga was later rebuilt between 1933 and 1935 in order to increase her top speed and help her accommodate more modern aircraft. Number three, the Soryu. Length, 746 feet. Maximum speed, 34 knots. Crew, 1,103. Aircraft capacity, 63. Soryu was the first Japanese fleet carrier designed from the keel up. It had a relatively high aircraft capacity and a fast, light hull. The design of the hull and use of powerful machinery gave the Soryu a high speed, but protection in many key areas was inadequate. Number 4. The Hiryu A sister ship of the Soryu, the Hiryu was an improved version of the Soryu. Stability was increased by strengthening the hull and increasing the beam. Additionally, armor protection was improved. The total aircraft capacity was 57. The Hiryu was very successful and became the template for upcoming Japanese aircraft carrier designs, including the Shokaku class. Numbers 5 and 6, the Shokaku and Zuikaku. Length, 845 feet. Maximum speed, 34 knots. Crew, 1,660. Aircraft capacity, 72. Knowing they could not match American industrial power, the Japanese Navy emphasized quality over quantity. This was clearly highlighted with the Shokaku-class carriers, which were designed to be a qualitative overmatch for their American rivals. Shokaku and Zuikaku were completed in August and September of 1941, respectively, and were superior to any other aircraft carrier in the world. They would hold this qualitative advantage until the arrival of the American Essex-class carrier in 1943. The Shokaku-class design was essentially an enlarged and improved Hiryu, with superior protection, range, and aircraft capacity. Of course, an aircraft carrier would be nothing without aircraft. Let's take a look at the different types that served in the Kido Butai. Number 1. The Zero Considered by historian Mark Patey as one of the most ingeniously designed fighter aircraft in aviation history, the A6M0 gained a reputation of near invincibility at the start of the Pacific War. The Zero packed a decent punch, equipped with two 20mm cannons and two machine guns. But its greatest attributes lay in its speed, incredibly long range, good climb rate, and unparalleled maneuverability. Any Allied aviator attempting to engage in a dogfight with a Zero would be at the mercy of the Japanese pilot. The Zero had a startling kill ratio of 12 to 1. It is important to note that the Zero was not a perfect design. 
In order to obtain such outstanding maneuverability, armor and self-sealing fuel tanks had to be sacrificed. However, these faults were not initially realized by the Allies, and the Zero fought supremely in the opening months of the war. Number 2. The B-5N The B-5N was the world's best torpedo bomber when the Pacific War broke out. It carried a crew of three and could achieve a maximum speed of about 230 miles per hour. In terms of armament, the B-5N could carry either an 800-kilogram torpedo or an equivalent bomb load. Number 3. The D-3A The D-3A served as the Imperial Japanese Navy's dive bomber. While not as technologically advanced as the A-6M-0 or the B-5N, the D-3A was not a bad aircraft. In fact, its performance was quite remarkable, as it sank more warships than any other Axis aircraft. While comparable to the American Dauntless in maneuverability and speed, it lagged behind in range and bomb load. The excellent training of the Japanese air crews helped to make up for the D-3A's deficiencies. These three aircraft represented some of the most advanced aviation technology in the world and were flown by the best trained and most experienced pilots among the major navies. For speed and maneuverability, the Zero was unrivaled. For torpedo and high-level bombing, the B-5N was superb, and for accurate dive bombing attacks, the D-3A was deadly. These aircraft combined to form an extremely dangerous offensive weapon. It's vital to see, however, that the Kido Butai placed too much priority on offensive potential. When placed in the wrong situation, its ships and aircraft could be extremely vulnerable. Paraphrasing Mark Petty, the Kido Butai was great at throwing punches, but not taking them. From December 1941 until April 1942, the Kido Butai would run wild through the Pacific, launching a series of offensives that would be unrivaled in their speed, force, and technical excellence until the late war American carrier operations of 1944 and 1945. The Kido Butai is most famous for its attack on Pearl Harbor. All six Japanese fleet carriers were used in the operation, launching a total of 353 aircraft that sank or damaged 21 warships and killed 2,403 Americans. In addition to attacking naval targets, the Japanese were also successful in crushing American air power in Hawaii, destroying over 180 U.S. aircraft. Fortunately for the Allies, no American carriers were in port when the attack took place. Following the attack on Pearl Harbor, the carriers Soryu and Hiryu were dispatched to assist in the conquest of Wake Island. In January 1942, the carriers Akagi, Kaga, Shokaku, and Zuikaku were deployed to support the conquest of Rabaul. The carriers would launch airstrikes and provide cover for troop landings. The Japanese would use Rabaul as a massive naval base and airfield. Soryu and Hiryu were sent to the Dutch East Indies and launched a 54 aircraft strike on Ambon. After Rabul fell to the Japanese, the Soryu and Hiryu would be joined by the Akagi and Kaga and would sail for Darwin. Darwin was the main Allied base in Australia and was providing support for Allied efforts in the Dutch East Indies. The four carriers conducted a devastating strike on Darwin, launching 188 aircraft against the town and harbor. Shore facilities were plastered with bombs and 11 ships were sunk. A second wave of aircraft attacked comprised of 54 land-based bombers, which struck Allied airfields. A vital support link to the Allied efforts in the Dutch East Indies was damaged. The four carriers then moved to catch any shipping attempting to flee the Dutch East Indies. On March 1st, they sank two U.S. Navy ships. Four days later, they launched a large airstrike of 149 aircraft on Chilatja, which was the last port available for Allied evacuation. A mine layer and five merchant vessels were sunk. Another nine ships were heavily damaged and scuttled to avoid their capture. On March 31st, the Japanese launched one of their largest carrier operations of the war, the Indian Ocean Raid. Five fleet carriers of the Kido Butai took part in the operation, Akagi, Soryu, Hiryu, Shokaku, and Zuikaku. The goal of the attack was to destroy the British Eastern Fleet and cripple British sea power in the region. On April 5th, the Japanese carriers launched a strike on Colombo, which consisted of 38 D-3As, 
B5Ns and 36A6M0s. While the attack succeeded in damaging shore facilities, a great deal of British shipping had already left the harbor, with the Japanese only managing to sink a destroyer. However, this was about to change when a Japanese float plane spotted the British heavy cruisers Cornwall and Dorsetshire. The Japanese carriers sent their reserve force of 53 dive bombers into action, and what followed was a near-perfect display of dive bombing. Most of the D-3As scored direct hits, and the two ships were quickly sunk. The carriers then pivoted and sailed toward their next target. On April 9th, they launched 91 B-5Ns and 38 Zeros against Trincomalee. Once again, the Japanese targeted shore facilities and managed to sink one merchant vessel. The carriers held their dive bombers in reserve in case they found Allied ships attempting to escape. It would prove to be a wise decision. While Trincomalee was under attack, Japanese float planes spotted the light carrier Hermes and several other smaller warships attempting to flee. What followed was a massacre. The carriers launched their reserve force of 85 D-3As and 9 Zeros. 45 dive bombers targeted and sank the Hermes, with 37 scoring hits. The remaining bombers sank the destroyer Vampire, a corvette, two tankers, and a freighter. While the attack failed to destroy the British Eastern Fleet, the aerial assaults on British naval bases, naval units, and shipping were major successes. In May 1942, Shokaku and Zuikaku moved to occupy Port Moresby in New Guinea. The joint U.S. and Australian naval forces managed to repulse the invasion, but lost the carrier USS Lexington in the process. The Shokaku took heavy damage, and the Zuikaku suffered heavy aircraft losses, forcing them to return to Japan. While it was a Japanese tactical victory in terms of ships sunk, it was the first time in the war that a major Japanese invasion was turned back. The absence of the Shokaku and Zuikaku in the coming battle would prove disastrous for the Kido Butai. The Japanese carrier forces would suffer their greatest defeat at Midway in June 1942. The Kido Butai would lose the Akagi, Kaga, Soryu, and Hiryu. Contrary to popular belief, Midway was not the battle that doomed Japan. Their two most powerful carriers were still afloat, and several new carriers were on the way. Nevertheless, the Battle of Midway halted the seemingly unstoppable Japanese advance and brought parity between the American and Japanese carrier forces. The career of the Kido Butai was short, but its accomplishments were great. It helped the Empire of Japan amass a territory of 3,300,000 square miles by 1942, making it one of the largest empires in human history. The Kido Butai's large grouping of air power, combined with excellent aircraft and aircrew, quickly crushed the Allied resistance it faced. While the lack of armor protection to field a larger air group seemed like a valuable trade-off for the Akagi, Kaga, and Soryu, it ultimately proved fatal at Midway. It is important to note that the Japanese Navy continued to be a major threat after the battle. The Americans would suffer one of their greatest defeats at Savo Island in August, and the Japanese carriers would win a tactical victory at the Battle of the Santa Cruz Islands in October. Eventually, the Japanese Navy began to lose the war of attrition and was overwhelmed by American industrial power. Nevertheless, the Kido Butai's unrelenting sweep across Southeast Asia between 1941 and 1942 will leave it remembered as one of the most feared forces of the Second World War.